What would a home look like that was inspired by a holiday cinema classic? Well, settle down into your comfiest chair and grab a cup of hot cocoa because you're about to find out. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. Welcome to Cinematically Inspired Design. Usually with each episode of this show, what I do is concentrate on one design principle from the cinema and teach us how to bring that particular element of design into our own homes. However, today I'm going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be exploring the different features of cinematic design in just one home. Christmas in Connecticut. Let's watch. Several months ago, I held a contest. The winner would receive a virtual makeover of one room in their home. And I asked the entrants to name a movie home they loved, and I would pull inspiration from that home for their remodel. One of the entries really stood out to me. He was requesting not just a makeover of an existing room, but a master bedroom and bathroom addition to his home. William lives in Pennsylvania and has a creek and woods and lots of graystone boulders surrounding his one and a quarter acre property. A dream setting and he was choosing the movie Christmas in Connecticut as the inspiration for this renovation. That's one of my all-time favorite movies too. In fact, next month in December, that's going to be the home I recreate for my other show on this channel called Behind the Scenes. Last December, I did the inn from the movie White Christmas and gave us a tour. I'll be doing the same thing for Christmas in Connecticut next month, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that tour. There was so much in this home to work with for inspiration, it was a fun adventure. Let's get started. When the home first appears in the movie, we're shown the exterior as the horse-drawn sleighs pull up to the home. The exterior already gives us the flavor of the home. It's a nod to what awaits inside. Traditional, lots of stone, substantial architectural elements, and plenty of windows letting light in. Before we even go inside, I want you to see the side lights by the front door. The pleated starburst shears inside each pane gives the entrance such a unique look. That alone makes a statement and we haven't even stepped inside yet. As they enter the home, we're shown the main room, the living room. It sets the tone for the entire house. Again, we see heavy use of architectural elements, such as the beams in the vaulted ceiling, large wooden double corbels, thick trim, whimsical cutouts, and built-in shelves and window seats. And look at this huge window that slants outward at an angle. Mm, love it. It's like they took homey and charming and combined it with drama and sophistication. The perfect setting for a Christmas movie. Hallmarkies take note. If I was Barbara Stanwyck, right after making this movie, I would have gone and built this exact home for myself. The characters in the movie comment on the beauty of the home, but not near enough. This set deserved a standing ovation and an Oscar. One of the male leads, Reginald Gardner, plays the homeowner and architect who designed the home. Speaking of his home, he says, If there's one thing an architect thinks of, it's details. And boy, the set designers did not miss a detail. Big thanks to the art director, Stanley Flesher, and set decorator, Casey Roberts, for giving us this amazing, timeless beauty. Let's examine some of the architectural elements a little closer. For example, look at the angled entrance into the master bedroom. I've never seen anything quite like it. The entrance before you even get to the door to the master bedroom is a feature in itself. It's trimmed out with a heavy beam on one side and an angled brace on the other. Corbels hold up a shelf eight feet high in the air. Then the two walls behind it meet in a corner at an angle from this entrance, creating a little triangular vestibule with the door into the bedroom on one side of the triangle. It's details like this in a home that make them personalized, make them your own. They add character. It's not trendy, it's unique. After I've shown you the different design elements in this home, I'll be showing you how I use them for inspiration in the master bedroom ensuite I designed. 
not a copy, but a muse to inspire the design. So it has the same feeling, it creates the same mood, but it is not a replica. You can do the same thing in your home with your favorite movie houses. Set designers have spent decades perfecting their methods, take advantage of their expertise. They're masters at creating a mood. Now let's get familiar with some other parts of this home. Can we just talk about that fireplace wall for a minute? It has such a presence in this room. It's as if the room was built around it. It appears to be about 15 feet wide. On one side we see niches recessed into the stone and on the other side of the fireplace is a large built-in bookcase. But for me, the most impressive part centers around that hearth area. The fireplace opening is about eight feet wide and the height, look at it, it's around seven feet tall. You could walk in. The trim around the fireplace opening is a thick and detailed molding and notice the concave curve there. But similar to the entrance to the master, the recessed portion of the fireplace is at an angle from that curve. And this creates a shelf above big enough for several large scale items. I also love the metal hood tucked up inside hovering over the logs. The fireplace wall is all about scale here, right down to that three and a half foot tall set of andirons in the front. The use of scale as a design element is one of the best kept secrets in the cinema. And it's one of the topics I've already covered in a previous episode of Cinematically Inspired Design, episode three, which you can find here on this channel. I'll give a link below to help you. All right, that's enough of an overview for now. Let's jump right in and look at the master bedroom edition inspired by this magnificent movie home. One of the first things I always do when I'm designing a home or a room in a home is start with the basic structure, the layout, the architectural elements. I knew the approximate dimensions the homeowner wanted for the room. This gave me the parameters to work inside of. So I knew that within this space, which is 16 by 21 feet, he would need a bed facing the large wall of windows that look out over the creek and the woods. That gave me the placement of the window wall and the bed wall. But I still needed to fit in a rather large fireplace since that's one of the main design elements of the home from Christmas in Connecticut and gives it its distinctive look and feel. It sets the mood. This homeowner also wanted the covered porch on his existing home to be extended out with an entrance to it from the master bedroom. So I needed to have a door to the porch along this wall. The leftover space on the other side of the fireplace wall would become a window, as another request was to bring in as much light as possible. The rest of the basic layout needed to include a master bathroom, and it was asked that it be on this end of the room. So with that in mind, I knew that the entrance would be down on that side also. And now the fun began with bringing the architectural elements into play, but I had a great book to borrow from, the movie home itself. I felt that even the entrance into the room should have the flavor of the master bedroom entrance in the movie. I thought the experience should start there, not just once you're inside the room, so I created it at an angle similar to the one in the movie home. My next stop was the fireplace. I knew there wouldn't be room to have a 15-foot fireplace wall like in the movie, but the scale could still be large in relationship to the room. That's really what scale is about. It's not about just having large things. The relationship of one item in comparison to another, that's what scale is. It's not that it needed to be the same dimensions as the one in the film, but that it needed to have the same presence in the room. I made the fireplace wall eight feet wide and trimmed it out with a similar thick detailed molding around the opening. I knew an important design move would be to make the opening itself rather large, again all about scale. It's five feet wide and over five feet tall, inspired by the movie home. It didn't make sense to curve this fireplace wall though, it would steal too much floor space. So I brought the curve in elsewhere, which you'll see in a minute. As for the entrance to the covered porch, I used a Dutch door. That's the kind that can open on the top and bottom separately and they're still available today. Just Google Dutch door and you'll find many sources out there. 
Why a Dutch door? Well, that type of door makes an appearance in the film. Theirs was in the kitchen, and believe it or not, their pet cow would make visits there. Well, there's no cow here, but it made a great door to the porch. It brought more of that same feeling from the film into the home. I have a large window wall opposite of the bed. The overall dimensions are 10 feet wide by 11 feet tall, but there is a space in between. And beneath those windows, I have a built-in window bench. You can see a similar bench under the large tilted window in the living room of the movie home. Love that. In fact, it's a bit of a theme with this home, as we see a window bench seat in the front nook of the home, as well as in the master bedroom. So I felt it was right at home to include one here. I added beams overhead, reminiscent of the living room in the movie. I added corbels and braces to some of those beams. This was just a must to make sure I was creating the same mood that was in the film. That home was dripping with architectural embellishments. It was just so much a part of that home on the screen, it couldn't be left out and have the same feelings attached to it. However, again, I didn't just copy, but I chose to improvise using it as inspiration only. You'll notice the beams that I have coming out over the bed and over the built-in seating. That's where I improvised. A new take on an old theme. It adds interest and it makes it one of a kind instead of a replica. And now for the entrance into the master bathroom. Here we get to incorporate some more elements of the cinematic home. This is where I got to bring that curved wall into play with thick tall molding above forming a shelf with enough depth to place large scale items as we saw here. I also had room here to place a built-in bookcase since that was also a big part of the movie's living room. To do this I needed to give that wall more depth but that wasn't a problem since the other side of this wall is the master closet. Oh, I had fun with the master bathroom design. Once again, I first needed to figure out the layout. It needed to have a closet, a toilet area, two sinks, a shower, and a tub. I also felt it too needed a lot of light since that's a big part of the mood and the feeling of the cinematic home it's drawing inspiration from. So I put a large window above the tub and I included a smaller one higher up in the shower and even added one in the toilet room. Once I had the layout, I needed to decide what type of fixtures for the shower, the tub, and the sinks. I wanted them to look elegant and have an old-fashioned feel since the movie was from the 40s, but still be modern at the same time. I liked the idea of bringing in an antique gold brass type of finish to the fixtures. That harkens back to the 40s, but it's still relevant today. A classic, just like the film itself. And now it was on to the material that I would put on the walls. I wanted something that had the feel of an earlier time and yet had a modern twist to it that fell more into the classic realm but wasn't boring. I found this incredible tile by Tile Bar called Wildflower that fit the bill. It had the right colors, it had texture, depth, a classic feel but definitely with a modern twist. Now I knew I couldn't overuse it. It couldn't go on every wall or it would overwhelm the room and, and almost have a dizzying effect. So I tried it out on different walls. I knew I wanted it behind the tub and the sinks, but how much could I get away with in the shower without it being too much? I tried different combinations and finally settled on this. The floor and the pony walls on the sides of the shower needed to be more neutral. I found this tile and it was perfect because the size of the geometric was much larger than the flowers in the main tile and the colors coordinated and I could run them horizontal which gave a nice contrast. But another plus was that it had a linen texture to it. If it had been smooth it wouldn't have worked as well since the floral tile has an overall smooth shiny look to it. I kept the other walls a neutral color that didn't distract but blended in easily. The flooring fits into this category too. It was the same as the one used in the bedroom. It's a tile that looks like wood, kind of a light oak with a slight grayish tone. 
It complements the color scheme nicely and yet it remains in the background like a canvas to the colors that will be introduced through fabrics, decor, and artwork. I knew I needed artwork in this room and this space seemed like the logical place. The room was so neutral, it needed color and it needed to be a large piece of art. And I felt it needed saturated color in this case because the rest of the room is creams and grays. I have done two different episodes of Cinematically Inspired Design where we talk about just color in the cinema. You can check those out on this channel. And by the way, I'll be putting links to those as well as all of the materials, paint colors, etc. that I used in this renovation. I'll put them below in the description. Now back to the artwork. I chose this work by Van Gogh for a few reasons. First of all, the colors were right. Much of the room is shades of marble, white, gray, black, and what goes well with that? Deep, saturated colors, and in this instance, I felt blue and gold. I also loved that the pronounced brush strokes of the Van Gogh mimicked the angular outlines of the flowers in the tile. And the rugs became artwork too. After all, rugs are artwork on your floor. I chose a deep red since that color had not been brought in yet, but it's pretty much a staple color in classic homes like this. I chose the traditional oriental rug because that immediately brings to mind something that is classic and sophisticated, timeless. I next turned to practicality. There needed to be more storage. I put a basket heavy on texture next to the tub for towels and I added a cabinet above the toilet. The vanities were kept light on purpose, meaning visually light. I didn't want anything heavy there since the space would have felt too crowded. So I have freestanding sinks with drawers but no cabinets beneath. Each vanity has a drawer that comes out in the front and one on the side, but I felt there still needed to be more storage. I opted to add some in a niche next to the vanities. Again, I was able to make it deeper since the wall behind it is the toilet room. What happened is what usually happens when you're given a challenge, even a functional one like finding more storage. It became an opportunity to add some more character to the room. So rather than just a building cabinet with doors, I left it open and painted the interior walls of it a bronze-like color. This does two things. It ties in the rest of the antique gold bronzy color going on in the rest of the room and it showcases the items placed on the shelves by giving them a color to contrast off of rather than just a neutral color like cream in the background. Now the things I put on the shelves will get their own little spotlight. The colors used there will become more significant simply because they show up more. They're emphasized and just like the painting on the wall, it brings in colors to the room that we haven't seen yet. What I do at this point is usually think of what colors haven't been brought into the room yet that would work. You can get away with a lot when it comes to small decor items. I'll give you a little tour of the bathroom now and then we'll go back out into the master bedroom and look at some of the details there. In the bedroom, I needed to decide what should be on the walls. I chose a paneling with wide planking as seen in the film. And I chose neutral colors again to stay in the background and let the colors in the room have their moment. I have that deep red oriental rug again on the floor. And because of this, I felt the cushion on the window seat needed to remain more neutral since it's so close in proximity. I chose a tan and cream tartan plaid Tartan has a classic old world feel to it, and yet the colors in this one were neutral. Perfect. Now the bedspread could have some punch to it. I chose a plaid fabric with deep saturated colors of blue and green. It fit the cabin feel, and those were colors not overused in the room. As for the decor, I knew that the homeowner loved to go antique shopping in nearby shops, so I furnished it mostly with things you would find there in an antique shop or a consignment shop. 
The framed print above the bed is actually a picture of one of the antique malls in the area. I'll put a link below to the image that I used in this rendering. And now we're going to tour the entire space and at the end you'll even get to see a short tour of the attached porch. And there you have it, a behind the scenes look at the process of how you can bring the secrets of the cinema into your own home. That way you end up with a home that like the cinematic homes we fall in love with, is timeless, creates a mood and tells the story of the family that lives there. If you enjoyed exploring some of the architectural features of this home, I think you're really gonna like what's coming up next on Cinematically Inspired Design. We'll be examining one of the biggest design secrets found in the cinema, their use of a wide range of architectural elements. We'll learn how they use them to their advantage, what the effect is, and how you can bring that same magic into your own home. It's not as hard as you think. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Cinematically Inspired Design.